What's up team? Okay, Coach Donna here. Today we are going to break down why protein matters so much. So this is a super, super important conversation. As athletes, we need to understand how to get our minimums in and why it's so important that we get those minimums in. So to start, we have to understand that Protein plays critical roles in just about every function in our bodies. It does so many incredible things that we have to have a minimum to allow those functions to happen. So we know um, that protein helps make muscle, right? When we go and lift in the gym and we do heavy back squats and we're sore, we're breaking that muscle tissue down and we need to have protein to be able to build that muscle up bigger, stronger, better, right? Protein also plays a role in giving our body structure and strength. So protein is part of our bones, our tendons, our ligaments, and our cartilage. It isn't just the bicep muscles that we see, right? It's a, it's a part of all of our structure that uh, we have going on. So it's really important that we get it in just for that alone. Protein also plays a role in making hormones in neurotransmitters. So if you've ever struggled with anxiety, depression, um, you know, uh, mood swings, right? So all of those things are facilitated by neurotransmitters. Maybe you've heard the term dopamine before or serotonin. Those are two very big neurotransmitters that are used to make us feel happy and um, calm and relaxed. Serotonin makes us feel relaxed. So uh, getting in enough protein is super, super important to be able to make those neurotransmitters. And then you are probably familiar with insulin. We've talked about it a little bit in our course so far. So uh, getting in the dopamine to be able to make those hormones is super, super important. And growth hormone, that actually helps us recover and get bigger and stronger. And we make growth hormone our entire lives. Also why important why we sleep because we make a growth hormone when we sleep. Protein is also super important for immune function. So antibodies are what our body makes to fight viruses and bacteria. So if we don't have protein, our bodies can't make those antibodies and we can't fend off things like colds or flus or even COVID, right? We get vaccinated and that vaccine helps our body mount an immune response ahead of time. So if we see a, an invader, we've already got a plan and set up and your body's like, oh, I've seen this guy. I saw it in a vaccine form and now I know how to attack it. And so I'm ready. But we have to make sure we have enough protein to be able to make that happen. Protein is also able to be used as an energy source. So it can be used in uh, one of the energy pathways, which we'll talk about later. And then it can also be converted into glucose. It's a term called gluconeogenesis, which is super important to remember because if we ever want to go low carb and we're getting in adequate protein and fats, our body can convert that protein into glucose, which our brains really like a minimum of 50 grams of glucose a day. And especially as women, it's really important to have an adequate amount of carbohydrates, but also at the end of the day, an adequate amount of calories to be able to make that glucose. So super cool. Protein is the only macronutrient of the three that can be used for all of these things. You can't take carbs and make muscle. You can't take fat and make muscle, but you can take protein and make glucose and cholesterol, which is super cool. The other really cool thing about protein is studies have shown that if you eat an excess amount, your body doesn't actually naturally convert it to fat. It may by default convert it to more lean muscle mass. So I go and do that back squat, right? And I'm sore and my body has to repair that muscle, right? It might repair it even bigger and stronger depending on how much protein I give my body. Now, 
with that being said, we often hear, well, your body can only use so much protein at one point, or it can only absorb so much protein at one point. That is not actually true. If I ate five pounds of steak, my body is going to use all of that steak. It might not use it for what we automatically think protein is for, it may potentially convert some of that protein into stored body fat, but it is going to use it. I'm not going to be pooping out steak. I will be pooping out the waste products of protein, which is nitrogen, but my body will always use all of the food that I consume. Okay, so you can, you don't have to worry about eating, you know, I can only eat 20 grams of protein at a meal. You can eat as much as you need when you need to eat it. And on that note, how much do you need? So you want to shoot for 75 to 100 grams of protein per day minimum, no matter who you are, no matter what your goals are. That's going to set you up to, again, be able to make your hormones, including your girl hormones or a couple of your girl hormones. Um, you need to have a healthy immune system. And then you need to recover from training. Now, if you're training harder, say if you are training more than an hour a day, five days a week, you definitely are going to need more than 100 grams. If you're someone who is younger and older, I want you shooting for more because your body needs and deserves it. If you're pregnant and breastfeeding. And then if you're recovering from injury or illness. Typically speaking, we generally suggest... 0.75 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. Now you play around with that based off of your other macronutrients. If you're following our Nutrition for Athletes course, we had you go and do the, um, the nutrition calculator with Precision Nutrition. And if you're finding this video on the interweb, uh, you can go to Precision nutrition.com slash nutrition calculator and it's going to give you baseline amounts of protein based off of your complete macro ratio so if you have say you set your ratio at uh, 30 percent protein 35 percent carbs 35 percent fat you're going to see that your protein is actually set uh, more at like 1.25 grams of protein per pound of body weight. If you set your carbohydrates lower, uh, excuse me, your carbohydrates higher or your fats higher, then that ratio is going to change, okay? And again, it, it's a personal preference, your training needs, what your body composition goals are, and ensuring that the other macronutrients are aligned so that you're satiated, well-fed, well-fueled, okay? You'll play around with it. It is okay to use protein supplements. In a perfect world, you're getting 70 to 80% of your protein from whole food sources. And we're gonna talk about what those whole food sources look like in a minute. But it is okay to supplement, especially if you're someone who is trying to get some protein before she trains and uh, you know her digestion is maybe a little bit sensitive. Nobody really wants to be eating eight ounces of chicken breast and then going in and doing a Metcon, right? So having that supplemental shake before or after you train is awesome. Just making sure that the majority of our protein comes from whole food sources. And what do I mean from whole food sources? I mean eggs, dairy, poultry, beef, pork, fish, nuts and seeds, beans and tofu. If you are a primarily plant-based eater, you are going to be getting most of your protein from nuts and seeds, beans and tofu. Now, you might have heard of uh, protein combinations. And if you're a plant-based eater, that you have to eat combinations of amino acids to make proteins and blah, blah, blah. That's actually not true. So uh, the way our body works, we have this really cool thing called an amino acid pool. And if I eat a uh, some nuts at 10 a.m. and then at 11 a.m. I eat some tofu and at 12 o'clock I eat some hemp seeds, all of those different amino acids are brought together into this amino acid pool in our bodies. And then our bodies are like, oh, 
Shauna needs to make some muscle for, um, you know, her back squat she just did. So I'm going to take this amino acid and this amino acid, put them together, and then send them out, and I'm going to repair that muscle. Or um, we have specific amino acids that our body uses for specific things like digestion. So if, you know, I ate something and then my body needs to heal some intestinal lining cells, it's going to take from that amino acid pool and then go repair those inte intestinal uh, lining cells. You just need to make sure that throughout your day, you're getting an adequate amount of amino acids, which amino acids are what protein is broken down into. So as long as you're getting it throughout your entire day, a, an, a minimum amount, it doesn't matter if you have something with, you know, this amino acid here and that amino acid there. This is for our plant-based eaters. If I nerd it out a second, sorry. Um, but it, food combining doesn't have to be a thing just as long as you're getting minimums throughout your day. Speaking of amino acids, so in our world, we have most of us have probably heard of about branch chain amino acids, BCAAs, and essential amino acids, EAAs. These can be beneficial, but they should be used as a supplement versus a primary source of protein because the way our bodies use these versus the way our bodies use even whey protein is different. When we have something like whey protein, that, that whey protein is coming in as a peptide. It's coming in as a bunch of amino acids mushed together. And our bodies absorb those more quickly than they would, say, an essential amino acid that's coming in that powdered form like this picture, right? Which the amino acids are already their little amino acids hanging out free dudes. So you have your peptides that are connected together or in your whey protein, or you have your free dudes, your essential amino acids, or your branch chain amino acids over here. So your body is going to be able to absorb more of the whey protein than our essential amino acids. That being said, you still absorb some when you use these products. And if you're using these products while you're consuming whole foods, you're going to use more. These are also a really nice way to gently supplement if you're in training and have a hard time digesting things. So these are great to put in a bottle when you're sipping in a longer workout or something like that. The difference between BCAAs and EAAs, branched chain amino acids were discovered as amino acids that are used for muscle synthesis, making new muscle. So they discovered that um, these three amino acids were a huge part of the muscle building process. And they, I don't know, the dudes, it was men, <laughs> the dudes that came up with supplementing BCAAs hypothesized that if I want more mean, lean muscle, if I were to take these supplements by themselves, then I'm going to be able to build more lean muscle. We've since discovered that that's not true, but of course they exist in our world, in the strength and conditioning world. And again, it is not bad to supplement with them. It's not hurting you at all. It just might not be doing as much as, you know, the whey protein or the chicken breast. Now, essential amino acids are all of the amino acids in supplement form that our bodies can't make. So our bodies have the ability to make some amino acids without eating food, but the majority of them have to come from food or supplement sources. Essential amino acids are all the amino acids that our bodies, or most of them, I think it's 13 typically, that they put in supplement form that our bodies can't make. And again, if you're someone who, uh, you know, has a hard time eating mid-training session, taking these is only going to be beneficial. It won't hurt. Lastly, we are going to really quickly talk about what your protein uh, consumption should look like before and after training. We are going to get into nutrient timing later in more detail, 
but I want to see you having 20 to 40 grams of protein before training and 60, 40 to 60 grams after training. Your 20 to 40 grams can come from supplement source, can come from easily digested sources, or if worst case scenario, you can't eat before you train, then you're not going to stress it because you're going to prioritize always getting in 40 to 60 grams of whole food protein sources after training within 30 to 60 minutes. So we don't wait three hours to eat our protein, right? We have a game plan after we train, I'm going to have a specific meal right after 30 to 60 minutes of 40 to 60 grams. And when I say whole food sources, I'm talking about eggs, steak, chicken, bacon, um, turkey, things like that. Worst case scenario, you have your protein shake right after and then within you know 45 to 60 minutes, you're having a whole food meal. All right, so this is just the tip of the iceberg of protein, but really the most important thing that I want you to uh, know and take away as a female athlete. And if you have questions, uh, let us know. And we hope so far, if you're in this course, that you are enjoying it. Thank you for watching.